Hi, good evening. This is Kim again, and now I'm going to talk about the quantitative part of stock evaluation. And I'm going to do that by illustrating uh, how to do your homework this week. So in your weekly homework folder, you have a worksheet called stock evaluation. And what I've asked you to do for homework is to select three different publicly traded companies and collect all this quantitative information and then you will note that on the second page of this I want you to summarize what you have learned about this company based on their quantitative information collected above. So let's start. I'm going to do one for you. Remember that this video should come after you listen to the quantitative analysis notes. Uh, this will be a lot easier after that video. So I'm going to start. The companies that I'm going to look at or collect information about include Home Depot and, of course, Lowe's. All right. First thing, business summary. Well, I could look this up over here. I could go, in fact, to this tab called Profile. P is right here. P stands for Profile. I could look it up and say you know, Home Depot, know all about it, but I do know that Home Depot is a uh, home improvement store. And I know that Lowe's is the same. Okay? So nothing significant there. Okay, the next thing, the symbol. What is the symbol? If I go over here, and I see Home Depot, right next to it in parentheses is HD. And that is in fact the symbol of Home Depot. HD. Okay, Home Depot of Lowe's. If I look over here and pop into Lowe's quickly, it is L-O-W. Go here, L-O-W. Next, current price. Oh, here I am on Lowe's, so I'm going to put $71.79. And Home Depot, the current price is, again, S right here. S stands for summary. So there's a lot of information that you can just gather right here from the summary page. The current price of Home Depot is $119.65 as of the end of market close today. Lastly, I'm collecting exchange traded. And I don't know why, but for some reason this isn't obvious. After the name and the symbol, do you see this faint uh, set of letters? That says NYSE, which stands for the New York Stock Exchange. So that's the exchange where Home Depot is traded. I'm going to stay on this Home Depot page right now, and I'm going to capture all of this information from here down, and then I'm going to pop over to Lowe's. So, if I look through this, I can see that I have another S down here. S for earnings per share. So, this is how much the company made net income after they paid all their expenses and paid all their taxes divided by the total number of shares that are out there and, and trading. So, if I look here, it's on S. So, if I go over here to this side, I see it right here, earnings per share. $5.13. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. $5.13. The next thing, uh, while I'm, I'm here, I'm going to pick up the beta because I had already talked about beta before and I noticed that the beta here, even though it says key statistics over here, I can pick up the beta here as well and it's close enough to say that the beta is 1. Uh, finally, the next bit of information I'm going to pick up over here is the P.E. ratio. And again, like I said in the previous tape, it's 23.34. So let me go put in here 23.34. And then let's move on. Okay, I'm going to go back up to the top here. And what I'm asking for is yearly revenue. In other words, this is part of this uh, looking at is this company growing because I, I don't know about you but I'm really interested in buying uh, stocks of companies that are growing and I'm going to measure this growth by by revenue 
and by revenue the, the symbol here is IS. So if I go over here to the left hand side, IS stands for the income statement. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop into that income statement and I'm going to notice first of all that the income statement is income statement right here is in reverse. So it starts over here at, at for 2013 and then 2014 and then 2015. And I'm looking at this line item called total revenue. Well, fortunately, what I see here is that I'm looking for a, a pattern, a pattern of growth. And I do see that with Home Depot. It's gone uh, up every year from, I'm just going to use the first two numbers from 74 to 78 to 83. In fact, even a larger, looks like a larger increase in growth uh, from 2014 to 2015, but gone up. I can also see that gross profit has gone up as well. And down here at the bottom, here's net income. Net income uh, also. Trend is up, which makes me very happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some copying and pasting here. So here's three years ago. And then last year, and then the most recent years. Oh, I put in gross profit. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to put in total sales. Okay, let me fix this quickly. And lastly, here. Okay, so that's good. I'm seeing that as, as good news for Home Depot. Uh, competitor PE, I'm going to pick that up when I do Lowe's, but I know that Lowe's is about, I think it's 24.3, something like that. And industry PE, here is C. C stands for competitors. I can go over here on the left hand side and click on competitors. Here's Home Depot, here's Lowe's, the other two are private companies. But I see that the PE, again I already have Home Depot, Lowe's is 24.37 and the industry is 19.78. So I'm going to go ahead and put in here 19.78, noticing that both Lowe's and Home Depot are higher than the industry. Okay, now I'm going to actually switch tabs and I'm going to go to the tab that, that uh, is symbolized here by KS. So I can scroll down this, but I know that KS is key statistics. So here I'm going to go on key statistics. Lots of information on this page. First thing I'm interested in is... ROE, return on equity, that net income for shareholders' equity. Again, talked about this before, but return on equity for Home Depot uh, is really 67%. The next thing I'm going to look for over here on Home Depot, there's return on equity. Here's my income statement items, which I'm not picking up anything from here, but I am from the balance sheet. In fact, I'm picking up a few things from the balance sheet. And if you remember from an earlier class, we know what the balance sheet is. It's the assets on the left-hand side and it's the liabilities on the right-hand side for personal and for a business. So if I'm looking over here, book value, right down here, book value is really assets minus liabilities divided by all the shares outstanding. So the book value of Home Depot, assets minus liabilities, is $6.73. Go here, $6.73. Whoops, I think I shouldn't have done that. 67, book, book value right here, $6.73. Okay. So at least it's positive. 
Not sure if it's good or bad because I don't know how it compares to Home Depot or any other companies, but it's positive. Have more assets and liabilities. Uh, the next item down here is total cash divided by total debt. And I, this, this may be a personal thing, but I really like to invest in companies that are, that are not so heavy in debt and I'm going to put a caveat in there that says, unless the industry lends itself to a lot of debt. So for example, if you look at automobile industry, automobile industry, uh, traditionally, all the companies carry a significant amount of total debt right here, total debt. So it's, it's the way the industry operates, and I'm going to have to accept that that's, that's the way it's going to be. But in some industries, it's not, and, and the companies are all over the board. Some have a lot of debt, some don't have much debt at all. And the, I guess the reason I like a company with lower debt is because when we fall on hard times, which we do, or something happens, like, for example, Volkswagen, they, they have some money. They have some money uh, in their emergency fund, so to speak, and, and it helps them ride out these bad events or even a, a bad economic cycle. So I'm looking here and I see that the debt at Home Depot is about 19, I'm just going to round this, 19 and cash is about 5. So I'm just going to put, I'm, I'm going to leave it as a ratio in here and recognizing that cash we have about uh, 5 to 19. Okay, 5 cash, I'll just write it out, 5 cash to uh, 19 billion debt. Okay. So it's almost like a one to four ratio to put billion in here just to clarify. Okay, so Home Depot obviously doesn't have enough cash to pay off their long-term debt, but they do have cash in the bank. Uh, the other thing I'm going to pick up from here are dividends. So now I'm going to move to this side of this page and I'm going to go down right here to dividends and splits. So the trailing or the past dividend rate was 12.24 but I, I'm going to guess the projected forward moving dividend rate is $2.00 and 36, uh, sorry, dividend, $2.36, and then expressed as a percent right here in yield, $2.36 is the same thing as 1.98%. Okay, so that would be, I mean, a dividend is money I make, so I want to count it, count on it. Uh, typically, companies that start paying a dividend will continue to pay a dividend because if all of a sudden they stopped paying a dividend, it would indicate that something is wrong. And when you indicate something is wrong, then shareholders become a little skittish and they start to sell your stock. All right, so companies, once you decide, you hope it's a long-term commitment. And not only that they continue to pay a dividend, but that that dividend grows over time. I want to see a dividend that is increasing over time. So you say to me, well, Kim, how do you do that? And I say, well, come over here. Come over here and take a look. Go to historical prices, right up here, historical prices, and click on the tab that says dividends only. I only want to look at dividends from 1981 to 2015. That's a long time. So what I'm looking for here is a pattern. Do I see a pattern of dividends increasing over time? And look, I'm just going to go back to 2004. Now, you will see four dates for 2004. Uh, this is because dividends are approved and paid quarterly. So the annual div dividend would be the sum of all these four quarterly installments. But what I'm seeing here is that it was at eight cents and then it went to 10 cents and then 15 cents, 22, 22 again, 23, 25, 29, 29, 39, 
47 and 59. So uh, lo and behold, it does appear that dividends have been increasing over time. And again, this is a very, very positive sign that the company is doing well because dividends are typically paid out of profits more than uh, not and, uh, and they continue to grow. So that's my qualitative assessment. Last two areas I want to I want to research include uh, total return. This is the 52 week change. Now this is a rolling 52 week change, but, but check this out. It it gives us a lot of information. So if I look here at the 52 week change of Home Depot, I can see that the price has increased 28%. 28.56%. I'm comparing that. Sorry, I had to take a water break there. Every time I get excited about stock information, I, my voice goes hoarse. So here's a 52-week change, 28.56. And we compare that to the S&P 500 52-week change, which is only 3.51%. So Home Depot has been outperforming the general market significantly and at a pretty good clip. So let's go over here to the 52 week change and let's put in 28.56. Uh, if we were owners of Home Depot stock, we'd be really happy if we owned it over the last year. You know, I always think that a, a picture says a lot. So I want to go over here in the chart for Home Depot and I just want to check it out over time. Like what's been happening with the price of this company over time? Okay, well, this looks pretty good and this is a two year, but you know what? When I buy stocks myself, I plan on holding them for a long period of time. So I, I want to see what Home Depot's done over 10 years. So 10 years ago, Home Depot, uh, it was about here and then the price dropped okay, it's gone down but it looks like since about 09 this being the recession this being the recession there's a good reason for this drop and I can explain that okay but since the re recession Home De Depot has has really uh, in terms of price has really done well for its shareholders so that's good news we always want that snapshot we want that to that look right there just to go along with all this information that we're collecting. It's important. Again, this is your money and you don't want to lose your money. I don't want to lose my money and I, I'm really, I don't want you to lose yours. So I have a vested interest in your money too. Uh, finally, the last thing I want you to do is, you know, is there anything going on? You know, for example, if we were to click over here on press releases and let's say this was Volkswagen, oh my goodness, would we see a lot of things going on with Volkswagen. But if we click over here with Home Depot, uh, you know, I want to see is, is there anything that stands out that's going on. Uh, they bought another brand here, so there's some purchases. Uh, Anyway, I want to kind of do peruse some of these and, and see if I can find anything out. I also like to look at headlines. What are some headline news? Uh, make sure they are relevant to Home, Home Depot, but I like to see the press releases, maybe some company events. Uh, other times I will actually look at the letter to shareholders in the annual report. This is where the uh, president or the CEO of the company talks about how the year went and also gives you an indication of where the future is with Home Depot. And I, I find all this information uh, relevant to my purchase decision. So anyway, I'd like you to peruse press releases and see if there's anything that stands out or just what's going on with Home Depot. Uh, the last thing I want to say is, okay, I already own stock in Home Depot, so I'll just tell you that right now and I have for a long time but I shop at Home Depot that is where I go over oh, nothing wrong with Lowe's but for just some reason it could be location Home Depot is closer to me Home Depot is my home improvement store of choice and I really believe that 
if we're going to be investors, we should invest in companies we like or companies we use. I, I wouldn't want to invest in something I've never heard of because I'm probably not going to buy their products and I'm not going to be as interested in it. So I want you to keep that in mind when you think about, wow, what companies interest you, even for your investment game. So that's my two cents there. All right, I'm going to switch over here and now I'm going to pop into Lowe's and I'm going to collect the rest of the information for Lowe's. So the exchange traded for Lowe's is also the New York Stock Exchange. I'm just going to copy that. And then if I go here to the income statement, I'm, I'm going to bet that Lowe's has also, look at that, increase. Similarly, Lowe's, uh, Lowe's has been increasing over time as well. And I bet you if I looked at the chart for Lowe's, again, we would see something very, very similar to the Home Depot. Because these stores really are quite interchangeable. At least that's my thought. Okay, P-E ratio, again, from down here is 24.37. And the industry P-E uh, is 19.78 and book value let's go to book value of lows so I'm going to go over here to key statistics and I'm going to pick up the book value remember it's under the balance sheet and it's nine dollars and thirty six cents and then I'm going to pick ROE and I already looked that up before it's twenty eight point forty four and the cash to debt. Ooh, so Lowe's has a billion dollars in cash and 11 billion dollars in debt. So it is in fact more, uh, as a per percentage, it's more in debt. So 1B cash to 11B debt. And the ratio here, 1 to 11, uh, is significantly uh, they don't, in, in other words, Lowe's is in a poorer cash position than Home Depot. Earnings per share. That's back on my summary page. So I'm going to go back up here to, to S. And earnings per share is $2.95. Okay. Over, I'm going to go back to key statistics and I'm going to pick up the last bit of information that I need over here on the right. My div is $1.12 and $1.56 percent. So again, lower than Home Depot. My 52-week change, though, is 33.17. And my beta is 0.92. Very similar. So that's what I have. There I have these two companies. So what now? OK, well, let's talk about this. Same business. Home Depot is a bit more expensive, uh, but what really matters here is the P.E. ratio and Home Depot is lower. So uh, again, Home Depot is making uh, cost less per dollar of earnings if I were to calculate the P.E. ratio. Both have what look, appears to be strong growth rates. I could calculate these as a percent, but I'm just going to look at them now. They're both a little bit higher than the industry. Book value. Uh, it looks like Lowe's has uh, more assets to, to liabilities. Return on equity, though, Home Depot's making more money for its shareholders. Uh, EPS, stronger at Home Depot. I'm going to just kind of highlight some of these. I'm going to put a yellow one here. And I'm going to say these are a wash. I'm going to put yellow here to indicate Home Depot looks a little stronger. I'm going to put uh, yellow here. 
for Lowe's, return on equity, looks better for Home Depot, debt, better for Home Depot, divs, better for Home Depot, uh, beta, really a wash, but I'll give this one to Lowe's. Okay. And then lastly, the 52-week change in the dividend return, if I add these together, this is going to be about 34 and a half, and this is going to be about 30, 30 and a half. Okay, so this is a little bit higher, but you know what? I'm going to go for both of these are pretty good. So if I was going to assess this, uh, I would, again, go to the news, take a look at what's happening with both company, and kind of look at the economy and say, well, we're slowly picking back up, so there's no reason to think that anything earth-shattering is going to happen that will affect these companies. In fact, I mean, we could say that a lot of the disasters that occur actually benefit these companies, so I don't want to say that too loud. Uh, so I, I don't know, I might say both of these r represent good buying opportunities if I was interested in buying a home improvement type stock. Uh, if I was to pick one over the other, I might say, okay, I'm going to lean more towards Home Depot, but I'm, I'm not upset with Lowe's. So again, you have four choices to make here. You can say nah to both. You can say I'm going to definitely go for Home Depot, and this is why, because it's really important to me that, that the company doesn't have a lot of debt. Uh, next, it's important to me that, I, I, that this ROE is high. I'm, I'm not going to consider PE ratio right now because it's basically a wash. Uh, these are the industry leaders. Home Depot is almost twice the size of Lowe's, so, but I'm still talking the industry leaders overall. I, I like what I'm seeing in dividends over time. Uh, so, you know, that would make me stronger on Home Depot. You might say, hey, I don't like Home Depot's plus is too far. I really like Lowe's. I think they have a neater store. I think they have better selection, better products. And, and you can't, you would be right too, Okay. But the qualitative analysis is what goes here. So you're going to do talk about Home Depot and then talk about Lowe's. And in this case, it's going to be pretty positive. But don't think this always happens. You're going to end up looking at three stocks, and, and some of them are not going to be positive. For example, we looked at Verizon and AT&T in class, and there was significant disparity in those two stocks. So that's what I want you to do for this week's homework, and I'm, I'm really eager to see what you have because for me, I look at this as, I, I don't know, I have 200 of you students who are working on this assignment. So, so what a great way for me to not have to do the research and just rely on all you guys to pick it all up. <laughs> anyway, that's your homework. I'd ask you to do three other stock evaluations for me and submit. And the second piece of your homework involves the investment game. So you're going to open up the investment game form. Open up the form, which I'm sure that I have. So let me touch on this quickly. So the investment game form looks like this. All right. You're going to download it. It's an Excel document. It's going to open up here in a minute. All right. Here it is. We just open this up all the way. By Sunday you need to select a stock portfolio, as many stocks as you want. You're going to list the stock name, the stock symbol, the stock price, number of shares you're buying. You're going to let the worksheet do the math. You cannot exceed $10,000. Not exceed $10,000. Uh, so you need to You'll, you'll put your name on here. For my online students, you're not going to be a team. You're just going to work solo on this project. Not to worry, you have a team project coming up. Okay? There's no commission fees. I'm basically serving as your broker. Uh, so 
It's all for free during the semester. If you leave any dollars on a table, they are in a cash account earning 1% because as we know, cash accounts at a virtual bank are earning about 1%. So that's all there is for that. And that's an annual rate. So we're only talking a game for nine weeks. So you're not going to make any money putting this in cash. I'd really like you to think about stocks that are potentially going to grow over the next nine weeks of school. Uh, could be something related. I don't, I'm not going to say anything. I want you to go for it and I, I want to see. Again, there's a, a prize for the winner in addition to just kudos for making good, good stock choices. Uh, there is, is a Christmas or a holiday present, so to, so to speak. So I'm looking forward to collecting all of these by Sunday in your folder. And then on Monday, when we do your in-class assignment for my online students, I will teach you how to put these online. And you'll go put yours online and we'll be ready to roll. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Good night.